Ron asked me to come over and sort of show y'all a little stuff about air brakes this morning. I worked on air brakes for 30, 40 years ever since they, uh, You got four major components of air brakes. You got a foot valve. You got a tank. And you got your brake chambers. My artist ain't too good. Alright. Everybody knows the compressor supplies the air, foot valve. It's mounted somewhere on the firewall. That's what when you mash the pedal, that's what it mashes like a master cylinder or anything else on the car. Except it's air instead of hydraulic. You got two tanks on the truck. You got one that's primary and one that's secondary. The reason for that is your primary tank supplies all the air for your foot valve and your brake chambers, but if something goes wrong with the air system, you've got air in the secondary tank that'll give you enough air to get it off the road, to get the truck stopped, or something of that nature in an emergency situation. You got most most trucks have got two tanks on them like this. They they got a check valve in it right here in this line. When you crank, I know it's probably most of y'all know that when you crank this truck up out here, some of them's got two needles on the, on the air pressure gauge. One of them will come up to 60, it'll do this, and then it'll, then that second one will start coming up where it's filling up this secondary tank. It's got a low air buzzer on it that when you lose your air pressure, your air pressure starts going down on the primary tank, you'll get out to 60 pounds and the air pressure buzzer will come on. When that air buzzer comes on, be getting that truck stopped, or get it off the road, or be slowing it down or doing something because you ain't got long to get it stopped. If you lose the pressure on this primary side, your secondary side, we will furnish you, like I said, enough air to get the truck stopped. All right. On your wheels, you have a thing look like this called a, a double axis it's called a brake chamber. Looks like this right here, it's got a rod that comes out that pushes a slack adjuster right here on your wheels. It, uh, when, when you apply the brakes, this front half of this brake chamber, there's different kinds of brake chambers, 30-30s, there's 40-40s, there's 60-60s, it's according to what size truck you got, how many axles you got on it, stuff like that. When, the, when you mash your brakes, it actually pushes this rod that applies the brakes when you when you actually when you put when you put your parking brakes on on the truck there is no air pressure on any of this it actually dumps the air off of it that's what it does the rear the rear half of this brake chamber it's got a spring in it i mean it's a big spring too and when it when you dump the air off the truck it pushes this forward lots of brakes now this is on rear brakes only now on your, on your front brakes you only have a single chamber. It only works when you apply the brakes. This this back here is for parking only. Back here. Alright, if you like I said, if you if you lose your air pressure, that truck's gonna lock down in the middle of the road. Because there is no pressure on this right here when you when you put the brakes on. It's got a little valve that sits on the frame, it's a little square valve, it's called a QR valve, which is quick release. When you pull that yellow button out on the dash, it dumps all the air off the system, and these right here pushes these brakes on and applies the pocket brakes. Now, a thing about air brakes is you can be going down the road and you can have a full a full pedal of brakes and not have no brakes on that truck. The adjustment on this right here is critical on air brakes to keep these brakes adjusted. Where this rod only moves. But somewhere between a quarter and a half inch, you have to get on there with a screwdriver. It's got an adjustment on the side of it right here where you can adjust it. And the, the travel of that rod is not only like, like a half inch to one inch is on all that rod is supposed to travel. Like I said, you can, and when you put these parking brakes on, it does not put the front brakes on, it only puts the rear on. If it's, if it's a tandem axle truck, which means it's two axles, you put it on on all four wheels. If anybody's got any questions now, we can go along and ask.
Okay, that's why. Yeah, so can. All right, on your compressor, up here on the motor, you can, uh, pressure here, it's got a, pressure here, and it's got a little old valve right here on the side of it. And it's got a little small line right here. It comes all the way back to this tank here. It's got a big line that comes all the way back to this tank here. The big line pumps the tanks up. The small line senses air pressure in this tank. And whenever it gets up to, most times it's 125. Almost all trucks it's 125. When, it, when this little valve here senses that there's 125 pounds of air in this line, it'll just make the compressor more or less bypass. It'll make it pump the air outside. That's where you hear it. Sometimes when it's pumping like that. All right, on your, all right, on your quick release valve, I mean on your foot valve here, like I said, that's what you're macing whenever you, whenever you are, uh, you got, there may be as many as 15, 15 lines on that thing. On each one of these chambers right here, it's got a line going to this one, got a line going to this one, on each one of those wheels, it's got, it's got uh, uh, four, six wheels on it, it'll, it'll have 12 lines on this tank right here. Two, four, six, eight, have 10 lines on this tank, because you only, you only have one going each, but you got to have, you got to have a, a line going from this to this to apply the brakes here, and one to also, when you, when you release, when you push your yellow button in, you'll hear it taking on, sound like it's taking on air. What it's doing is it's releasing this, this pressure against this one right here to push this plunger back. It's a big old plunger in there with a spring in here. It'll push that spring back and release the brakes. Anybody got any questions? I'll ask away now. I'll start answering if we can. So on the tandems, you've got one line coming in that actuates the, the brake calipers itself, and then the right, other chamber, line, yeah. chambers, uh, the other line disengage, or uh, allows the air to release, so there's the plunger releases. There's a line on each one of these. There's a line here and a line here. This one here actually applies the brakes when you're going down the road. This one, what it's for is to release mm -hmm. the brakes when you push that yellow button in to keep the air on this all the time. And when, you, when, when the air falls off through this quick release valve, it dumps all the air out of this tank. When you pull that yellow button out and it goes shh, like that right there, that means it's quick releasing all the air off of this tank. Okay. It's not actually releasing the, the air off the tank, but it's releasing the, the air off of the system here, back through this quick, back through this valve right here, and it'll just allow this spring to push this plunger in and apply your parking brakes. Okay. And the, the, the and smaller. If you, if you ever have an occasion to take one of those brake chambers off, don't mess with it, or they'll kill you. If you have to take that band off of it, you have to take the bolt off of it, take the band off of it, it'll kill you. It's got like 20, 20,000 pounds of force on that spring. I mean, it'll, 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 it'll throw the end of that thing and sling it slam through that wall over there. Always take it to somebody that knows what they're doing. The adjustment on these air brakes is critical. They need to be done once a month. It'd be checked once a month. Is that something that we can do, or is that something no. the shop needs to do? <laughs> we got that recorded. Uh, we need to tell our shop that. Right, well, my, uh, I got another question for you. You said coming from the compressor going to the primary tank, mm -hmm. you have one large line to fill the tanks up. Yeah. And the smaller line monitors how much pressure is in the actual primary and or secondary. Yeah. And then when it hits a certain point, like ours, I think the old engine we have is set at 120. Is yeah. that when you hear it, when it hits 120? And it fills up in the air, it goes just push off air. That's right. And then that's that's the that compressor is actually just bypassing. Mm -hmm. It's actually just bypassing right through here. Through the okay. Bypassing air. It's just actually pumping that side. On that, on that valve that's on the side of this tank here, it's got input, output, and uh, exhaust on it. It's actually exhausting through, that, just out through the outside air here. All right, now coming off the secondary, the quick release valve, that goes to the, the just the parking brake side. Yes, sir. Whenever you, whenever you pull that yellow handle out to set your parking brakes, you know the red one, the yellow one's for the truck, and, the, and I don't know if you have a yellow one on the other truck. It just got yellow, just one parking brake. It's just one. Just one. Okay. Well, the other one, if there's two on there, that's for the trailer brakes. If, it, if your truck's equipped with trailer brakes. <clears throat>
yeah, whenever, whenever you pull this valve out, it actually it don't actually dump all the air out of this tank. It just dumps the air out of all these lines going here from these tanks from this from this uh, foot valve here off to all these uh, chambers here, all these chambers here. And, and 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 then this spring, this big spring here, this actually just pushes this. Okay. Well, what happens if, if the pressure gets low enough, say below 60 or whatever the, the, the low pressure is set well, it's at? it's not actually, the truck will not actually lock down until probably it gets down to around 30 pounds somewhere. But once that, air, that low air pressure buzzer comes on, they come on at 60 most of the time. You'll hear this thing cycle anywhere from, from uh, most of the time from 90 to 125. All right, the low air buzzer will come on at 60. All right, at 60 pounds of air in both of these tanks, you ain't got but about four or five strokes of the pedal on this foot valve here, where you where your foot valve comes down in here and you in your cab. You ain't got but about four or five good strokes of that thing, and your air is gone. And then you need to be getting that truck off the road. Then does the the QR, the quick release valve, does that actuate after it gets below a certain psi, and then lock the brakes up? Yes. Okay. It will, it will actually wait. This right here will come on. It takes pressure to keep this on. To keep it takes it, high pressure yeah. from, from this tank through your, through your uh, valve on the dash. It's got a rubber diaphragm in it. Mm -hmm. and, and, when it and when you push it in, it puts pressure on this. It keeps it closed. But when you, when you pull that, you actually take this pressure off of it. It's valve open and it dumps the air out of all this system. All right. And then in that turn, it, Put right. your pocket and in, in, in the same way, if the pressure gets low enough, we don't have enough pressure to keep that valve open. pulled open, it automatically sets. That's right, it'll go off and it'll lock the truck down right in the middle of the road. Okay. And I noticed y'all got a big ladder truck in somewhere. That, that wouldn't be funny. <laughs> no. Uh, one thing about these brakes is adjustment on these brakes. It doesn't matter what your county shop is, take it over and tell them to do it. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm sorry, fellas, but I worked for a company for 25 years that's safety conscious, and that was, you know, safety, there's no, there's no exception to safety. I don't care. Well, I agree with you. Yeah, you know, just like yesterday, we worked, we worked a wreck over at the bypass. This guy in a dump truck loaded with 17 ton of asphalt. Was on the bypass over there and he hit a car. The reason he hit that car because he couldn't stop. And he had about five slick tires on the back of that thing. His brakes was not his brakes was not working right. Do y'all do any type of pre inspection sheets on these trucks or anything? Pre inspection. They have a check off they have to do every morning. And every Wednesday we do a kind of a, a truck detail of sorts. What I'm asking is, do y'all do like, well, I know you do your lights and stuff like that, but do you actually do the tire check and stuff like that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, right. that's an everyday okay. thing. You know, because I'm going to tell you, if you're out here in a wreck, in that fire truck, I don't care if it belongs to Bear County, if you're out here in a wreck and there's a slick tire on that truck, the brakes is not right or something like that on it, they're going to come out to Bear County, but they're coming after you too. So, when our arcade fire truck was in a wreck, pulled out from the car, they got the county sued for two hundred fifty thousand. They got the fire department sued for one hundred fifty thousand. They got the driver for a hundred thousand. So they coming after you, I'm telling you. <laughs> and they'll get what they want too. So that little kid in the back seat of that car had autism. They'll get, they'll get whatever they want. Trust me, it doesn't matter. You know, if you if you think something's unsafe on these trucks, get it fixed. I I, I don't understand what you're up against. We're up against the same thing in Jack again. You know, I, I don't know what y'all got for mechanics. Y'all y'all got y'all use the prisoners too. No, we have our own shop. <laughs> Might, be better off. Might be better off with the prisoners. Yeah. <laughs> Can you edit that part, Jeff? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> part for the prisoners. I got a question.
question. Yes, sir. When you, uh, when you uh, like on these old trucks, mm -hmm. when you brake a lot, it heats, you know, yes. get hot, and it gets hard to stop. What causes that? Why is it hard to stop? Because what happens is, is those, those brakes are made, those hey, brake lines are made out of Can you go down and see what that guy wants? And, and that asbestos will get hot, the drums will stretch. I know that sounds stupid to say brake drum will stretch, but it will actually stretch enough to work. It's not, heat is the worst thing in the world. If, you know, if you, like I said, if you're going down the road and you, you know, you see going down the road with a foot on the brake or whatever, you know, it, it, it's not, you know, when you go smelling them brakes, you need to be slowing the truck down and getting it off somewhere and letting it, let the brakes cool off on it. Do they not have a routine maintenance that they do on these trucks, like pull the wheels off and check the brakes and stuff like that? Like cordless. <laughs>